Hello, YouTube. I am Chelsea Dunchy, coach at SOCF Orlando CrossFit Gym. I have Asia here. We are going to be talking to you today about handstand push ups, handstand progressions, and the three things on how to overcome your fear, getting comfortable with technique, and getting comfortable with being uncomfortable upside down. Welcome to the SOCF YouTube channel. So first things off, we have the kick up. So for ultimate beginners of gymnastics or CrossFit movements that are a little bit more technical as the handstand push-up, people have three aspects that it is hard for them to attack while thinking of a handstand push-up. One is the fear behind the movement itself. Um, the technique and developing that technique from your coach and the surrounding members. Also getting comfortable with being uncomfortable upside down. So the first thing that we are gonna approach today with this is the fear that you experience when thinking about a handstand push-up. Now the first thing with fear, you can do all of these movements at the comfort of your own home. And so until you're comfortable with step two, and that is the technique. And you can do these parts at the gym. So first, we're gonna uh, do a few demonstrations of approaching your fear at home. Movement one is called a monkey cartwheel. Asia's gonna do a monkey cartwheel. Notice that she's not doing a traditional cartwheel where her legs are locked out. She's got that tight core. Maybe her skill set is not quite there yet. But as you continue to do this monkey cartwheel, the skill will come along with that. Getting comfortable with being upside down, putting the pressure on your wrist, and gradually the core will get tighter, the legs will get tighter. So let's do a couple more of those. Noticing that her arms are still locked out. Try to tighten that core just a little bit. So now, with her second go around, her shoulders and her torso were more stacked on top of her arms. Her legs were still bent, but we're gonna do one more and see if we can improve on that. Much better. Asia herself has not quite mastered the cartwheel with everything stacked on top of each other like a gymnast. In all of these movements with the handstand push-up, handstand walk, I like to think of myself as a gymnast. So sometimes at the gym, you'll even see me start in this position with everything stacked, my shoulders are locked out, I'm going into it, one leg, end around, and I'll finish, just like a gymnast. Put yourself into that headspace. My arms were locked out, my core was tight, my toes were pointed, and my legs were tight. I even took that first step with one leg lining myself up a lot. So again, this is something that you can practice at home, starting with the monkey cartwheel, leading into a full cartwheel. <music> Moving on to a tick-tock kick. This is going to help you approach the kick up to a wall when you're doing a handstand push-up. All right, so a tick-tock kick, Asia. Perfect. She's again getting comfortable with transferring the weight from her feet to her hands in a straightforward motion, which before we were going around. So again, let's get another tick-tock kick, transferring the weight from her feet, torso, to her hands, kicking her legs up. Again, this is going to lead you to getting comfortable and kicking all the way up and landing on the wall. So now, we've mastered the kick up. We're not quite able to stabilize a handstand hold in a stagnant position, perfectly fine. Now we're gonna work on building that core stabilization using our hip flexors, our glutes, and not using our shoulders. We're not gonna fry those out yet. And we're gonna do a crow headstand. Many of you that are in the yoga world are used to this movement. It's a fantastic training. You can go slow. I would recommend having either an ab mat, a yoga mat, or a gymnastics mat for comfort of your head. I'm a little crazy, so I'm just gonna use this mat right here. So 
So we're gonna start with our hands. I want you to notice that my fingers are going to be spread out. This is able to distribute the weight evenly across my palms, giving me more stabilization. You're going to, we're gonna talk again about this part of it when we get to the handstand push-up technique. All right, so we're going to start with our knees on the elbows, head down, her head is in that neutral position, just like you're gonna be doing with a technique handstand push-up. She's going to transfer the weight to her core and kick her legs up and try to stabilize this as long as you can. This is going to be really important when we get to the handstand walk portion. Perfect. So excellent handstand, uh, pro handstand there, Asia. Next, we're gonna talk about technique in a handstand push-up. There are a lot of elements that go here. I don't want you to be scared about everything that we're gonna talk about. It all kind of flows together when you get used to it and you break down the movement. When we were talking about the crow headstand, I mentioned fingers. That is the first part. Finding your hand position, fingers out. Next, you're gonna find your perfect position with the wall. Not everyone's positioning on the wall is going to be created equal. There are different heights, there's different body types, there's different uh, shoulder distance, mobility, challenges that we have, and also butts. Sometimes when you go into a handstand push-up and someone has a larger butt and they go to kip, yes, your butt can push you off of the wall. So again, not everyone's distance with their hands is gonna be the same. So find where you are comfortable. So Miss Asia here, she's a little bit more petite. She's a little bit short in stature. So we're gonna start with the first basic challenge point. Let's see, let's see if six inches works for Asia. So Asia is going to approach the wall with the first starting point about six inches out, which is probably gonna work for her because she is the shorter in nature. Um, but again, challenge, uh, try to find what is best for your height, your stature, your mobility, and your butt size. So go ahead, Asia, let's get a kick up. Perfect. So this is about six inches out and it does work for her. Couple things to notice. Her heels immediately went to the wall. Nothing on her body is touching the wall and she kicked up directly to her shoulders being actively pushed out. This is how you always wanna start your handstand push-up. Her fingers are wide. Her head is not correct, Miss Asia. We are looking straight out through the window. So just remember that in a handstand walk, yes, you put, go ahead, you can step down. Thank you, Asia. Always remember with the handstand push-up, your head is through the window. Kind of think of it like if you are comfortable with a barbell movement, you have that push press and you activate more muscles when you push your head through the window. You want to accomplish that the same way with your handstand push-up. All right, so let's do that one more time. We're gonna point out a couple of more things on technique. Asia's going to take that step one leg at a time. She's got her arms all ready to go, locked out one leg at a time, heels directly to the ground, punched out, head through the window, tight core, now. She is ready to do some kipping handstand push-ups, but we're not gonna show you those yet. We've got one more thing to show you. Asia, go ahead and come down. Now we're gonna lead you into how to get comfortable with being uncomfortable upside down, and we'll come back and show you how to do kipping handstand push-ups. All right, next piece, getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, this is probably one of the most common progressions that is taught when a handstand push-up is programmed in a workout, um, doing a handstand push-up while on a box. This is also, uh, it's a great worldwide technique, um, and there are multiple ways to approach this and then progress to getting on the wall and getting upside down. So first, um, you have your box height. Everyone's box height is going to be a little bit different depending on how high you want your hips to be, and also your height. So again, Asia's a little bit shorter in uh, nature, so we are going to bring the box down just a little bit. Asia's gonna start with her knees on the box. So this is going to bring her hips a little bit lower and not as much weight is going to go onto her shoulders. So she's on her knees, 
She's going to walk out. And then she's going to try to stack her hips as high as she can. So she's gonna walk it in until she feels as though she is stacked. And again, notice that her head is in that neutral position. She's looking straight through. She's got those fingers nice and wide, and she's going to be able to do a handstand push-up strict right here with not a whole lot of challenge to it. So if you are a beginner, this is exactly where we would start. This becomes a little bit too easy. Say you're able to bang out 15, 20 of these. Let's make it a little bit more challenging. Asia, let's walk it out until you are now on your tippy toes. Tippy toes, all right. And again, she's gonna now walk it back in. She's got her hips nice and high, everything stacked. Now she has more weight put on her wrists, hands, and shoulders, and she can do a strict box handstand push-up. Is that a little bit more challenging? Yes, it is. Excellent. So we've got those two progressions there. Thank you, Asia. And that is going to lead us into a angled wall hold. For if you have been doing CrossFit for a few years now, you know that the CrossFit Open has wall walks in it. And you can kind of think of this movement as a similar movement. So we are gonna start Asia on the ground and the mat. All right, next we have the angled handstand wall walk or angled hold. So Asia's going to do her push up just like a hand uh, wall walk. She's gonna push her hips up as high as she can. Then she's gonna walk her hands in, leaving those, let's bring those feet down a little bit more to say about right here, a little bit lower, a little bit lower, keep them straight. Now, perfect up and down. Hips are directly on top. She's gonna be comfortable right here. If she wants to walk all the way up to the wall now and put her nose against it, this would now lead us into a handstand walk training position. But we're not quite there. Asia, you can come down. Excellent job, good job. All right, so we have gone through the handstand push-up progressions. We've conquered the fear. You know your technique and you are now comfortable with being upside down. Let's talk about how you can do a kipping handstand push-up. This is how you are going to bang out multiple reps in a workout. This is how, if you are building strength, you can do low tempo handstand push-ups or even get to a strict handstand push-up, which we're seeing more and more in the CrossFit Open and the CrossFit Games. So, Asia, let's go ahead and get upside down. Again, notice Asia's form. She's going to have her hands straight up. She's gonna kick with one foot. She's gonna land with her arms straight out. A RX handstand push-up is going to have your arms starting up. She's going to lower herself down, heads pointing forward. Bring those knees down. Notice her heels are no longer on the wall. She's got her butt and she's going to kick towards the wall, locking her shoulders out, putting her head through the window. Bring her on down. And kip, excellent. You can come down. Now I wanna point out that there are two or multiple ways you can do a kipping handstand pushup. I'm gonna go back to the barbell. You have that push press, very similar movement right here. The kip from your push press, you're using your hips as a very strong muscle, taking weight off of your shoulders. I want a scenario where you are trying to rep out as many handstand pushups as you can. Say it is a high volume, short workout, and you need a fast burst of handstand pushups. So I'm just gonna give an example of a low kip, high speed handstand pushup. Hand straight up, one leg, right into it, landing here, and whoop. Notice that my feet were coming off of the wall. In an error, I was too close to the wall, so when I was kipping, my butt was pushing me off. So for me, I need to come back just a little bit. So we're gonna try this one more time. Perfect. 
perfect. So I was able to rep out multiple while I was keeping a very low hip. Now, next scenario, you are in the 10th round of a 10 round workout where there are 10 handstand pushups and your shoulders are exhausted. What do you do? Do you do one at a time, come off the wall and rest? No, get comfortable with bringing your legs down a little bit. Pretend now like you're doing a thruster. You're all the way down and you're jumping out. You're using your hips even more, taking pressure off of your shoulders. If you know that in the workout, your shoulders are gonna get fatigued, start doing this style of the kipping handstand pushup sooner rather than later. Let me show you what I mean. Notice how much deeper and lower my legs were getting. The knees were almost coming to my elbows and I was, it's a little bit slower, but it's a lot more efficient. Well, thank you, YouTube, for joining us today. I hope you learned a lot. Um, SOCF Coach Chelsea here. I'm gonna leave you with one last piece of advice. If you know that you are gonna be doing handstand push-ups in your workout, wear a low ponytail because you don't wanna land with the ponytail on top of your head. It can get a little painful and mess it up. Thank you, Asia, for joining us today. Please feel free to stop into SOCF Orlando for your free trial and to ask any questions that you have. Thank you. Thank you.